we start by making a dilute gray. See how black that is? This is phthalo green, blue shade. And then also alizarin crimson. So that makes this, this gray color. And it goes back and forth from reddish to greenish, which makes it a very kind of a dynamic sort of mix. So I want to make sure I have a lot of this. First, I'm going to wet everything. I'm going to make believe the horses aren't there. And then I'm going to uh, apply my dilute mix of the phthalo green and the alizarin to get an overall um, grayness to the paper. And the next thing I'm going to prepare is the white. I have a dish here, but I, I want a deeper dish. So I'm going to move this over and I'm going to, I've got my toothbrush here. You can use your finger or you can use a popsicle stick to pull the bristles back when you're ready to let it snow. So the, the procedure is wet the paper, put on the gray mix all over, and then we're going to spritz it with the toothbrush all over. And... So it's all going to kind of drift down. Then we're going to use a slightly stronger mix of those same colors. And this is just to suggest trees in the background. It's really important to have all your ducks in a row before you start. So I'm going to use a big brush to wet the paper. What's the consistency of that uh, white uh, mixture? Is it loose or is it? Uh... This is pretty loose. I, I will call it whole milk. Okay. It's not heavy cream. Is that a gouache? Or... It can be, it could be white gouache. It could be titanium white. It could be Chinese white. Okay. It could be... Zinc white, an anyway, opaque any of those white. Okay, an good. opaque white. This is one from a year or two ago. Oh, yeah. Okay, so this is where we use this technique. So, so this would be the first tone, and then we went in with a darker tone, and then after two snowstorms, we dry the paper, and then we go in and do uh, more distinct foreground elements and uh, in our case we're going to put in some trees and the horses and then the finale is the final snowstorm here I go clear water and like I said ignore the horses I believe they're not even there okay so now uh, with this same brush, I'm going right into my dilute gray mix, and I'm going to stand up to do this. And and I'm my paper's tilted. See it running down. That helps me put everything down fast. This is why you have to have everything ready ahead of time because it's going to be fast. Now you might say, oh, how is this going to be? That's too dark for snow. But we're working with white as well. So, okay. So that's the first pass. And now it's my paper's really wet. Now I'm going to take my white. So I, I have the bristles up when I do this. 
but I'm pulling the popsicle stick towards me. And see that what's happening here? I just love that. Okay, so that was my first snowstorm. And I'm going to take a brush, a bristle brush, and I'm going to uh, make a thirsty brush out of it. I'm going to squeeze it. So it's, I've squeezed it and now I'm going to slurp up the paint that's accumulated down here at the bottom. And I'm going to use a tissue to, or a paper towel just to get the excess here so I don't have weird things happening. All right, so now I'm going to go into the darker mix. Here, I'm just going to wing it. I'm just going to suggest hills or something. Need more white. And here again, it's not too thick. It's still about the consistency of milk. So I'm gonna pat that. It's because I waited too long. Okay, so we're having another snowstorm. And what this does is just puts this tone all over. But look at that swirling snow. I love it. All right, so now I'll let it run around a little. You could use an atomizer if you wanted to move things even more. But I think this is good enough. I think it looks interesting. All right, now I'm going to dry it. All right, now you can take a deep breath. <sighs> okay, so I'm gonna have two brushes handy to do the trees. I'm painting with water here and it's really moving things around. I'm kind of just going back and forth with this. And now I'm going to touch it with this, the color. So I'm just holding my brush way back here so I can get a busy sort of motion here. Okay, so I'm bringing this tree down to the bottom of the fence. Now this is just water. I'm just dotting this around, just trying to, so it doesn't look too solid. I'm going to take my atomizer and I'm just gonna spritz a little bit. So when I create these trees, they won't be too stiff. I want them to stay atmospheric. Okay, now I'm gonna look at these trees. I just went into my more dilute green lizard combo. And back here, the trees are more, more indistinct. Little, another spritz. I keep some peekaboos in this tree. This is the more dilute paint. And I'm just pushing down with the brush. And these are further back from the fence. All right, so for the horses, I feel like I wanna use something warmer than this. So I'm gonna add some burnt sienna to that mix. I think I might wet this horse and then drop, drop this strong color in. Okay, so there's some white on the brow of this horse and I'm gonna leave that there. 
But the rest of the horse I'm going to wet. And I love how the horse's legs get lost in the snow. So you don't have to paint them. <laughs> okay, here I go with this stronger brownish color. So it's going on nicely here. I want this to be nice and flow nicely. Okay, so I'm seeing snow on his back here. So maybe I'll use a damp brush. Now this is just water. And I'm just going to dilute it a little on his back where he's catching snow. Okay, now here again with a damp brush, just water on my brush now, and I'm pulling that color to the edges. So now I'm going to do this horse. I'm going to make this horse darker. All right, so now I'm going to get my ultramarine. And I, I may add some of our background color to this if I feel like it's not dark enough. And I'll take some, actually, I'm going to take some burnt umber and throw it in there to get a black Okay, so that's a really nice black, really strong. And I'm just trying to make sure I have a nice puddle. So I have an, oops, <laughs> I have a nice uh, dish of black here. I'm going to wet this horse. As I wet this, I'm picking up uh, the white paint and color underneath. Now I'm going into my dark. This source is really cool. They're both really just in silhouette. Take this synthetic brush. And just uh, where the mane is, just going to flick it a little bit. So this is a little darker than I would have liked. Um, I'll go back and lift here or else paint with the white gouache so I get more contrast with the horse. I'm going to do some lifting in here, which should be easy. I'm going to use my synthetic brush. So this is damp. And so I'm going to go in between the fence post. So rather than just willy-nilly erasing 
you know, lifting everything here, I'm taking advantage of this to do some negative painting because you know I love negative painting. I'm just softening the edges in this evergreen. I think that's part of the problem is there's too much contrast because I made it too dark. It's detracting from the horses. I can really push the paint around with this brush, pushing the brush instead of pulling. I wouldn't do it with a natural bristle, but Works well with the synthetic. Now I'm going to put a little shadow underneath the, uh, the horses. And this is going to be dilute. This is a synthetic but it's a bigger size. And I'm going to use it to start painting white where I want it, the snow to be really white in the foreground. I want it to all be up here. So I'm having fun with this now. snow. I'm tapping the toothbrush so I don't get blobs. At this point, I don't want any blobs. Here comes the snow. Oh, it's better already. Oh, it looks <laughs> beautiful. Oh, good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that helped with this whole background business that I wasn't happy with. Oh, I know what I should use. I'll use my 
nice brush, stiff bristle, take off the excess water, and, and this will make it nice and even, I hope. All right, c'est fini. Okay, take mm -hmm. care.